Hello everyone, welcome back to class. Today we will start a, a new topic in module 8 which is circular aperture. In the last class we talked about a diffraction pattern which is formed using rectangular aperture and in case of rectangular aperture we observe that the fringes spread both horizontally and vertically. Okay. And if the vertical extent of the aperture rectangular aperture is larger as compared to the horizontal uh, extent, then the fringes in the horizontal directions are spread more, their extent is larger. Okay. The extent of a spread of these fringes are inversely proportional to the, the extent of real aperture. Okay. If the aperture width is smaller, the fringes will spread more, but it would be in opposite direction. While in case of uh, circular aperture, since there is a circular symmetry or rotational symmetry, we assume or we may predict that the fringes would be circular. Okay. The symmetry predicts that the fringes would be circularly symmetric. So, we will repeat the same mathematics which we did in case of uh, rectangular aperture and the expression which we derived in the rectangular aperture, we will make use of that. Here in circular aperture, we will introduce some spatial functions which are called Bessel functions. Okay. We will make use of Bessel function and with this we will see the kind of fringes we observe and the prospective applications of the observations which we will make in a while. Now, in this figure, the capital sigma plane represents the aperture plane while small sigma plane represents the screen plane or plane of observation. Okay. The circular aperture which are considered here in this sigma capital sigma plane, it is of radius small a. Okay. And the origin is associated with the origin is at the center of this circular aperture, the x axis is coming out of the plane of the circular aperture while y and z axis are extending in this vertical and horizontal direction as is shown in this figure. Now, similar to uh, aperture plane, in the screen of observation plane, we have another axis system which are designated by capital Y and capital Z. X axis in both the uh, systems they coincides. Okay. Now, we launch again plane wave on the uh, aperture and then we observe diffraction pattern on the screen. Now, here again we assume a small differential area which is at a distance rho from the center in aperture plane. Okay. Now, this is at a distance rho and rho which is joining the origin and the differential area, it is inclined at angle phi from the z axis as is shown here in this figure. Okay. Similarly, in the screen plane or plane of observation, the point of observation p is at a distance q from p naught which is origin in screen plane and the corresponding angle here is capital phi. Observe the difference between the two phi's. Yeah. In the aperture plane, the angle is designated by small phi, while in the observation plane, the angle is designated by capital phi. Okay. Now, the point of observation P is at a distance capital R from the origin in aperture plane. And since we are in the Fraunhofer regime, capital R is much, much larger th than any other relevant distance in the problem at hand. Okay, that is, it is larger than the radius of the circular aperture. Okay. Now, we will borrow an expression from our previous class which we derived 
for a random uh, aperture and this expression is equation number 6 which is given here and uh, the and the, this the same equation is now renamed by equation number 14. Now, the optical disturbance p arising from an arbitrary aperture in the far field is given by this expression. This we have derived in the last class, therefore, I will not devote more time on this. Yeah, the integration is done over the aperture and ds is the area of the differential element, differential area element. Okay. Now, since the aperture at hand is circular aperture which is which hold the circular symmetry. Therefore, to enjoy the symmetry of the system we will move into spherical coordinate. Okay. Now, in the spherical coordinates in both of the planes that is aperture plane and the plane of observation we can replace the coordinate system small a y small z and capital Y capital Z with these expressions. Okay, because we know like suppose this is your uh, aperture plane and this is your circular aperture and any elemental area which is at a distance rho and which is making an angle theta or angle small phi with the z axis. Then this rho and uh, phi this these are the two variables in the polar or spherical coordinate system. Okay. In Euclidean geometry or in x y uh, coordinate system, x y are the independent variables are variables while in polar geometry or in spherical coordinates it is rho and phi which are independent variables are uh, variables only. Okay. Now, we can relate these two in aperture plane we can rep rep represent small z by rho cos phi which is a very much obvious in this figure because this is rho, this is your z axis and this is your phi therefore, z is equal to rho cos phi. Similarly, y which is pointing up y would be rho sin phi okay, this is what is done here. Okay. In the aperture plane small z is replaced by rho cos phi and small y is equal to rho sin phi. Similarly, in uh, screen plane screen of observation the point of observation is at a distance q and this point the line joining the origin at the screen plane and the point of observation is making an angle capital phi with the capital z axis therefore capital z and capital y here would be replaced by q cos capital phi and q sin capital phi okay this is very much obvious now we will substitute these new expressions of small z small y capital Z capital Y in equation number 14. Now, one more thing which we must not forget is that d s which is the area of the area element in uh, Cartesian coordinate system d s was expressed by d x into d y while in spherical coordinates d s would be represented by rho d rho d phi. Okay, why? because suppose we have a arc yeah, and uh, in this arc this is the area element which we are picking up. Suppose this distance is rho and this extension in a radial direction is d rho okay, and the change in the angle like this differential angle is d phi. Then the area of this uh, element would be rho d rho d phi okay this is what is written here ds is equal to rho d rho d phi now with all this substitution and putting after putting the appropriate limit the expression of total field at point of, of observation p would be given by equation number 15 okay where ds is replaced by rho d rho d phi small y small z capital y capital z they are also replaced with the appropriate expression of course, the limit of integration for phi would vary from 0 to 2 pi because it is to full circle therefore, it phi will go from 0 to 2 pi and rho which is the radial distance of uh, area element this will vary from 0 to a, a is the radius of the circle okay, or radius of the aperture. Okay. Now, because of the 
complete axial symmetry, the solution must be independent of phi. Yeah, because irrespective at what angle you are looking at, the system is symmetric. Okay, therefore we can just by looking at equation number fifteen we can guess, or just by looking at the aperture shape we can guess that we can solve above equation with capital phi is equal to zero, and this will give us the same result because the solution must be independent of capital phi. Okay, therefore in equation fifteen let us look for phi dependent part. Okay. And what are the phi dependent part? Okay, the, the, here it should be equation number 15. I uh, am mistaken here. Yeah, okay. Now, phi dependent part e in equation number 15 is this. Okay, we, because we replace this phi, yeah, capital phi is equal to 0 now. Okay. Now, this particular integration it is very tough to deal with okay. and it is encountered often in mathematical physics problem. So, how to deal with this type of complex integrals? Now, there are some special ways to solve such an integration and one of them is using Bessel functions which is a special kind of functions. How the Bessel functions are defined? Bessel functions of order m is given by this expression, expression number 16. Okay. And if you plot this Bessel function with respect to the, the independent variable u, okay, then what you see is that for different orders of this function, m is the order of this Bessel function, you see, see different kind of variations here. Yeah. For uh, 0th order you get this type of variation, for first order this type of variation, for second order this type of variation. Okay. These are the functional forms of Bessel function of order m. Now, you see that this function which we want to solve, let us write it in the next slide, it is phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi and then e to the power i k rho q by r cos by r and then in the exponent again cos phi yeah cos phi d phi now let us compare this expression with equation number 16 then you see that cos function is here and iota is also here this is also similar the limit of integration is again 0 to 2 pi here it's matching yeah if we somehow neglect this then we uh, this integration now then resembles with equation number 16 okay now let us see more into it let us see how does a Bessel function of order 0 looks like. Now, Bessel function of order 0 looks like this. Here, what I did is that in this expression, I just substituted 0 for m. If you substitute m is equal to 0, then this term will go away. You would be left with u cos v dv. Yeah. Now, this is more close to our expression which is e to the power i q k rho by r cos phi yeah, 0 to 2 pi d phi. Now, you see that perfectly resembles with equation number 17. Therefore, once we know the value of j naught u, we know the solution of this integration. Now, there is one more very important property of Bessel function which we will use and this property of Bessel function is called recurrence relation. Now, what is recurrence relation? This recurrence relation says that in Bessel functions if you multiply u to the power m, m is nothing but a number and u is a independent variable here and if you differentiate this with respect to the independent variable that is u, then you get this function u to the power m j m minus 1 u. Now, this is called recurrence relation. Okay. Now, when m is equal to 1, if you substitute m is equal to 1 in equation number 18, then we get this expression. Okay. Okay. Here d u prime is missing here, the integration is with respect to u prime, u prime is another variable. 
Now with this in hand, we will try to evaluate uh, the integration. Okay, this is the expression which we get using uh, Bessel function in equation number 15. Now let us go back to our, our equation number 15. This is our equation number 15. Now in this equation number 15, we are replacing this part with this taken into account. Yeah, this whole part is now being replaced with j0. Yeah, we know because, because there is a one to one correspondence of uh, Bessel function of 0 order with our integration. Okay. Therefore, we are only left with d rho integrand, yeah, the integrand which is now depend upon rho okay, and rho is varying from 0 to a. The equation number 15 now get a bit simplified. Now, we will have to integrate the Bessel function of order 0. Okay. This Bessel function j is called uh, order 0 and it is a Bessel function of kind 1, yeah, let us also uh, write it here, yeah, instead of writing it uh, of order 0 only, let us also say that in bracket, it is a first kind. Okay, there are different kind of Bessel function, but the first kind Bessel function of order 0 looks like this. Now, those who study uh, mathematical physics, they must be knowing about these kinds of special functions, Bessel function, Hermite Gauss functions. Now, once we have uh, equation number 20, then uh, we see that here it is a very big like so many parameters are involved here k rho q by capital R. So, let us replace them with w, okay. let us introduce a new parameter w which takes care of all these k rho q and r. Now, with this d rho would be given by capital R by k q into d w and then let us substitute them back into equation number 20 and after a bit of mathematics, we get equation number 21. Okay, this integration now, it, uh, now looks like this. Now, you see in equation number 21, we have an integral, this integral which is done on j0 w and uh, w varies from 0 to k a q by capital R. Now, let us go back to the recurrence relation which we just looked at a minute before. Let us go particularly to equation number 19 and equation number 19 says that if you have, uh, let us write equation number 19 in the next slide. Equation number 19 says that if you, if you have a function which is varying from 0 to, uh, sorry, uh, u prime is equal to u and here it is u prime, it is j 0 u prime d u prime, then this is equal to, let us go again back to equation number 1, this must be equal to u j j 1 u, u j 1 u. Okay, let us apply this in this. Now, here you see that we have j 0 and instead of u prime we have w, again w, okay. there is 1 to 1 correspondence now. Okay. Therefore, we can use this property here in equation number 21. So, after using it, now equation number 20 reduces to equation number 22. Okay, a bit simplified now, equation number 2 is now a bit simplified, but now here we have Bessel uh, function of first order. Instead of 0 order Bessel function, now we have first order Bessel function, but this integral is now gone. Okay, it is now in terms of j1 only. How to evaluate it? Okay, we will see. But once the field is known, we can easily calculate the total irradiance at the point of observation p, which would be given by equation number 23. Okay. Here in uh, this expression, you see that a new parameter which is a, which is the area of the circular aperture, which is nothing but pi a square. Okay. Now to find the irradiance at the center of the pattern, that is p0 here, yeah? let us go back to the first slide where we have all the arrangement here. This is the center of the pattern on the screen. Now, to calculate the irradiance at that point, what we will have to do is that we will set q is equal to 0. Why? Because if this is the screen plane and these are your axis and this is your point P and this is your point P naught, then P naught to P, this separation was q. Now, if you want to calculate the irradiance at point P, then you should 
put q is equal to 0, this represent point P naught. Now, if you set q is equal to 0 in equation number 23 and also use j naught 0 is equal to 1 and j 1 0 is equal to 0, okay. Then from the recurrence relation, where is the recurrence relation? This is our recurrence relation equation number 18, okay. Now, let us uh, rewrite the recurrence relation for m is equal to 1, then this recurrence relation for m is equal to 1 would uh, be like this d by du of u j 1 u is equal to u j 0 u. Now, let us differentiate it with respect to u, then you will get u d j 1 by t u plus j 1 is equal to u j naught u. Okay. Now, this is the expression which we got from the recurrence relation. Okay. Now, with this recurrence relation, we can calculate j naught u yeah, which is given here j naught u. j naught u would be given by from there j naught u is equal to d j 1 which is function of u upon d u plus j 1 which is function of u upon u. This is what we get and this is what exactly is written in that slide in this equation number 24 is nothing, but this expression this is your equation number 24 in the slide ahead. Now, with equation number 24, we will now try to evaluate the air radiance at q is equal to 0. Okay, but when q is equal to 0, u is at 0 because u is nothing but k a q by capital R. So, once you substitute q is equal to 0, u is equal to 0. When u is equal to 0, then j 1 0 as we know j 1 0 is equal to 0, j naught 0 is equal to 1. So, therefore, this quantity would be 0, this quantity would be 0, this quantity would be 0 this quantity would be 0, is not Now, if, if this is so, then we can write that as u approaches 0, j 1 u upon u has the same limit as d j 1 u upon d u. Okay. Here you can use loss Peter rule, okay, because the numerator and denominator they both are simultaneously 0. Okay. Therefore, let us go back. Okay. Now, in this equ equation 24, now j naught 0 is equal to 1, I mistakenly wrote it, it, it as 0, but it is 1. Now, you see that on the left hand side we have 1, while on the right hand side we have 0 by 0. Here we will use loss Peter rule okay. and with this, since the both quantities, they has the same limit okay, with hospital rule we can clearly see that that as you u approaches 0 the terms in equation number 24 the right hand side the terms on right hand side of equation number 24 they both has the same limit okay while on the left hand side we have one unity here okay the left hand side term has value which is equal to 1, while the right hand side uh, of equation 24 has two terms which are having the same limit. It means these two terms would be equal and would be equal to half. Okay. Therefore, j, j 1 u by u would be equal to half as u is equal to 0, as the LHS of equation 24 at u is equal to 0 is 1. Okay. Now, if j 1 u by u is equal to half, then again let us go back to equation number 23 and see here, it is j 1 u by u okay, and this value would be half and if you square it then this would, would be 1 by 4. Okay. Then after this substitution, the irradiance at center, okay, these all calculations are done for u is equal to 0, it means at the center of the screen. I at the center of the screen would be equal to epsilon a square a square by 2 r square, which is irradiance at the center at theta is equal to 0 direction. Okay. Now, if capital R is assumed to be essentially constant over the pattern, 
okay, because it is everything is symmetric, okay, because there is a circular symmetry. Now, the, this is the screen and this is your aperture plane and capital R is very huge. Now, if capital R is assumed to be essentially constant over the pattern, then the final irradiance would be given by equation number 26. Okay, this is the capital, uh, this is the irradiance at the center which is I0 and the rest of the term is here which we borrowed from equation number 23. So, this is the expression of irradiance, final expression of irradiance due to the circular aperture. Now, since sin theta is equal to Q by R, okay, let us go back to the first figure. You see here that this is Q and this is capital R. Okay. And if you say that it is theta, then sin theta would be Q by R. Yeah. Therefore, this expression of irradiance here Q by R can be replaced by sin theta and then sin theta will appear here both in the numerator and denominator. Now, if you plot this equation, then you see this type of curve here on the vertical axis relative irradiance has been plotted while on the horizontal axis k sin theta is plotted. Now, this has a maxima here which is at k sin theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to 0 and then a minima and then secondary maxima again minima and then again maxima and then minima. It is a this type of pattern is called Bessel pattern. Okay. And if you rotate it around this axis, then you will find a circular concentric circular ring pattern. Okay. Therefore, a uh, circular aperture gives rise to a Bessel pattern and this would look like a concentric circular ring and this is airy function. Now, if we we want to calculate the position of first minima, then what we will have to do is that we will somehow make right hand side of equation number 27 okay. 0. For this, let us, uh, let us see when j 1 goes to 0 and then let us calculate the val that value of u which makes j 1 0. Okay. For this, we substituted j 1 equal to 0 and from there we what we found is that that at u is equal to 3.83 g1 goes to 0. It means when u is equal to 3.83 we will have first minima and when you substitute for the expression of u which is k sin theta r k a q by r therefore from there you can calculate the radius of the first dark ring. Okay, which would be given by q value. Let us designate the radius of first dark ring by q 1, then q 1 would be equal to 1.22 r lambda by 2 a and q 1 would be the radius of the first dark ring. This radius would be given by q 1, okay. the radius of the first dark ring. In, uh, in circular aperture diffraction pattern. Okay. It is a very important relation equation number 28 q 1 is equal to 1.22 r lambda by 2 a where 2 a is the diameter of the circular aperture. Now, once we have this, now this has a very uh, broad implications because circular aperture it can easily be replaced with a lens also. Yeah. If you have a lens of uh, diameter d, then this lens will also give a similar type of diffraction pattern. Okay. Now, for a lens which is focused on the screen, the focal length would be given by capital R. Okay. Now, in this particular case, the radius of the first dark ring would be given by 1.22 f lambda by capital D, where D is the aperture diameter, okay, which is equal to twice of A. Now, from equation number 29, what we can see is that as D approaches lambda, the airy disk, this pattern which we saw in the last slide, 
this air disc can be very large indeed okay and the circular aperture begins to resemble to a point source of a spherical wave okay because if you reduce the radius then what will happen is that the pattern will broaden okay you will have this type of pattern then for larger d or for larger a and with a further reduction there would be more broadening and therefore if uh, when you the when the size of the circle is reduced to a point then you you will see that the spherical waves now get generated you will see spherical waves coming out of the this point source now coming back to the applications of this circular aperture diffraction study this circular aperture as you saw it can be replaced by a lens or it can be replaced by point source therefore the same study can be used to evaluate or decide the resolution of some imaging system how it is done we will see here now consider two point sources placed very close to each other okay now they are point sources which is a limiting case of circular aperture they will form their own diffraction pattern which would be nothing but airy disk okay now the radius of the airy disk as derived in the last slide would be given by q1 which is the radius of the first uh, minima or first darkening now once the radius is known we can also calculate the corresponding angular width of the first dark ring okay the corresponding angular measure would therefore be given by delta theta where delta theta is nothing but q by f okay which is given here the q1 by f would give delta theta which would be equal to 1.22 lambda by capital d okay these are the angular width of the ring yeah suppose this is your first dark ring then the radius of the dark ring is given by q1 and the corresponding uh, width is given by delta theta okay where this is f now once it is known now suppose we as stated in the previous slide suppose we have two point sources okay and these two point sources has certain angular separation which is given by delta phi okay there are two sources and the rays are the light is coming from these two sources at an angle delta phi now if the angular separation of the point sources is larger than delta theta okay if this condition holds the images will be distinct and easily resolved why because if the angular separation between the sources is larger than delta theta then the first minima of two sources would be separated and you can clearly resolve them as is shown here in this figure okay the first minima of the first source is being formed here and the second source first minima is being formed here which are well separated okay as the point source approach each other their respective images come together and overlap okay and once they are overlapped we would not be able to clearly resolve them or distinct them now here again rayleigh gave a criteria which is called rayleigh criterion and according to this criterion the images of the point sources are said to be just resolved when the center of one airy disk falls on the first minimum of the airy pattern of the other point source what it says is that suppose this is the airy pattern of the first point source okay and this is the first minima of this first point source now as per this statement when the center of one airy disk falls on the first minimum of the airy pattern of the other point source 
means the second source center must fall on this point. In this particular case and if they are closer than this criterion then they would not be resolved. Okay. This is the minimum possible separation wherein the two point, point sources can be resolved. Okay. Now, as per the Rayleigh criteria, the maximum of the other should fall on the minima of the first. This is how, yeah. Now, you see that on the first minima, the center of the first uh, second falls. Similarly, on this first minima of the other, the center of the first falls, and this is what is shown here. You see, this center is falling on first minima, and this center is falling on the the first minima of the other source. In this case only and, and if the, the sources are closer than this separation, then these peaks are the center of the two pattern would now be closer than this separation and they would not be able, we would not be able to resolve them. Okay. The least separation between the two point sources is given by this Rayleigh criteria and this least in under this least separation the center of one must fall on the first minima of the other. Okay. If they are closer than this they will be said to be least uh, they would be said to be unresolved. If they are farther than this they are obviously resolved. The minimum separation is given by Rayleigh criterion. Now suppose that delta theta and delta phi is equal that is they are at the limit this is the minimum separation between the two sources wherein they are said to be resolved. In this case, the minimum resolvable angular separation are the minimum resolvable angular separation or angular limit of resolution is given by equation number 32 which says delta phi mean is equal to delta theta and delta theta as we derived in the previous slides it is equal to 1.22 lambda by capital D. Okay. Now, we were having two sources and their angular separation is delta phi yeah? and the minimum value of delta phi is given by equation number 32. Now, suppose that the, the two sources the center to center separation between the between the images of these two sources is delta L. Okay, there are two sources which are uh, the angular separation between the two sources delta phi and they are forming their own airy disk. Now, if the center to center sep separation of the images of this airy disk is delta L, then we define limit of resolution which is delta L min as 1.22 f lambda by d. Okay, another very important terminology is defined as resolving power. Okay. Resolving power of an image forming system is generally defined as either 1 by delta phi mean or 1 by delta L mean. If we are in the angular domain then we use delta phi, phi mean and if we are in the linear domain in a uh, length domain then we use delta L mean okay, where delta L is the center to center separation of the images. Yeah. We have point sources here, we have a screen here, these two point sources form their own images or their own disk and the center to center separation of this disk is delta L. The minimum value of this distance is delta L mean which is called limit of resolution and inverse of limit of resolution is resolving power or inverse of angular limit of resolution is also resolving power. Okay. Now, depending whether we are talking in terms of uh, angle or length the de two definition the two expression varies yeah? the, the both are equally valid delta 1 by delta phi mean and 1 by delta L mean. Now, there are few takeaways from this lecture. Now, if the smallest resolvable separation between images is to be reduced the wavelength might be made smaller. Okay? Because from this expression, equation 32 and 33, you see, this is the 
minimum resolve over angular limit and delta L mean is limit of resolution in linear domain. In both the equations lambda is there in the numerator and d is in the denominator. Now, if you want to increase the angular limit of res resolution or limit of resolution then you will have to either increase lambda or decrease capital D. Yeah, This is what is being said here in this point exactly. If the smallest resolvable separation between images is to be reduced, the wavelength might be made smaller. Yeah, If we use a smaller wavelength then we can separate out the closer sources. Yeah, And therefore, using ultraviolet rather than visible light in microscopy allows for the perception of finer detail. Yeah, If two images are very close to each other, go for the lower wavelength. If the wavelength is lower, limit of resolution is also lower and then we can uh, look into the finer details which is not visible in the larger wavelength limit. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, the resolving power of a telescope can be increased by increasing the diameter of the objective lens or mirror okay? because diameter is sitting in the denominator. Now, as an example to have a perception of these uh, parameter, let us talk about our eyes. Yeah? The diameter of human eye people is about 2 millimeter under bright conditions yeah? and suppose we are using a green light which is a lambda is equal to 550 nanometer, delta phi min turns out to be roughly 1 minute of an arc. Okay. And with the focal length of about 20 millimeter, here we are assuming that this is the focal length of our eye lenses, delta L mean on the retina is 6700 nanometer and this is twice the mean spacing between the receptor. Okay. This is how uh, the eye image is, yeah. this is the resolving power of the eye, this is how it is calculated. Now with this, I end this lecture and uh, thank you for your patience. See you all in the next lecture.